the first guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the glorious Quran, it was not to pray, it was not to fast, it was not to perform hajj, but the first guidance given to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the humankind in the Quran was ikhra. It was to read. And unfortunately, what we have in the Muslim Ummah, it is divided that some of the people don't want to read. And the others, they want to read, but they take only half the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The complete guidance given by Allah in the glorious Quran in Surah Iqra, the chapter number 96, verse number 1, is Iqra bismi rabbikal Read, recite, proclaim in the name of thy Lord. So when you read and when you gain education, our Creator tells us, do it in the name of your Lord. So whenever you acquire education, this education that you acquire, whether it be in the school, whether it be in the college, whether it be in the university, it should get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the knowledge you acquire does not get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it may or may not benefit you in this world, but it will not benefit you in the akhirah. As Allah says in the Quran, Allah says in Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 56, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created the men and the jinn, not but to worship Him. The purpose we have come in this world is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the purpose of our life? Allah says in Surah Mul, chapter number 16, verse number 2, Allah zi khalaq al mawda wal hayata. It is he who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. This life that we are leading is a test for the hereafter. And this is an examination. And the portion of this examination, when you appear for an examination, but naturally you have a portion. You have a textbook to refer. The portion and the rules and regulation of this examination is given in the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran is the most positive book in the world. It is a proclamation to humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a guide to the erring. It's a warning to the heedless. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. That is the reason when we Muslims, when we gain education, we should see to it that this education gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the shortage of time, I'll just give you some examples. When we learn in school, in any subject, we should see to it that this knowledge gets us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we Muslims should be proud of our deen. For example, when we study science in school, this science that you learn should get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today is the age of science and technology. And alhamdulillah, the glorious Quran has proved itself to be the word of God in all the ages. Previously was the age of miracles. And the glorious Quran is the miracle of miracles. Then came the age of literature and poetry. Alhamdulillah, Muslim and non-Muslims alike, they acclaim the glorious Quran to be the best Arabic literature available on the face of the earth. But today is not the age of literature and poetry. Today is the age of science and technology. And when we analyze and compare the Quran with science and technology, we find that Alhamdulillah, the glorious Quran is par excellence.
according to the famous scientist and Nobel Prize winner, Albert Einstein, he said that science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. Let me tell you that the glorious Quran is not a book of science, S-C-I-E-N-C-E, -E, but it's a book of signs, S-I-G-N-S. -S. And there are more than 6,000 signs, more than 6,000 ayats in the glorious Quran, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. In a tradition, it said that Sayyidina Israfil salam, is in a perpetual state of buka, a perpetual state of crying. And he, he understands what's about to take place. And he's the custodian of the, of the tablets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the Prophet sallallahu has said, due to the height, the size of Israfil, that the tears of Israfil don't reach earth. And were they to reach earth, then we'd experience the tawfan of Nuh, the flooding of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam. We'd experience it in each and every single moment.